what's going on people mike c town here and um yeah we are a little bit past the halfway point of 2021 so it's time for my mid-year check-in so this is going to be my top 20 favorite albums of 2021 so far uh if you're new to this channel you'll notice that there are no rap albums hip-hop albums on this list and that's because i do a mid-year video with my guys at dead end hip-hop so if you want to know what my favorite hip-hop albums are of the year so far make sure you go over there and check that out i'll drop a link to the channel down there in the description section and uh we should start by as always informing you that this is my list this is not your list if you do not like my list literally no one cares so instead of complaining just drop your list down there in the description section and we can all either pick it apart or we can take some albums from it that we may not have heard this year um but yeah getting into this uh i haven't really been super adventurous as far as music goes this year um i haven't even really listened to a ton of new music this year um there have been a lot of good releases in my opinion but um, maybe not quite as varied as previous years. And of course, that's understandable due to the pandemic and all that good shit. But um, yeah, that being said, please make sure you drop some notes in the comment section down there and let me know what I may have missed because I am positive that I've missed quite a bit. So let's go ahead and get into this, man. Um, at number 20, we're going with The Great Park with Work With This. And uh, this is a German neo-folk project that I discovered last year with his album, The Ghost is the Only One Who Beats My Drum, which is fantastic. Uh, this one carries along that sound perfectly. It's beautiful, frail neo-folk. Um, his voice does remind me of David Tibet at times, but I feel like there's enough differentiation here to make this an interesting and unique release. At number 19, we're going with Ancient Mastery with Chapter 1, Across the Mountains of the Drama Scroll. Um, I'm sure I'm absolutely butchering that name, but um, this is epic black metal from Austria that really scratches that itch. It's the same guy from Narcissus, which is pretty cool, but uh, dare I say that this is a fun listen, but it really is. You know, it has that triumphant galloping sound without sounding hokey, and the musicianship here is just fantastic. So hopefully I will be able to snag a copy of the record when it drops, but you guys should definitely check this one out. Uh, at number 18, I'm going with Cold Cave with Fate in Seven Lessons. Um, I am an absolute sucker for Cold Cave's brand of synth pop, uh, but this one sounds even more like Depeche Mode than previous projects, but uh, it's catchy, it's infectious, it's just great. Uh, at number 17, I'm going with Paysage Diver with Geister. Um, this is an interesting release. You know, it's different from previous Passage albums. You know, uh, as a lot of people have already said, it's far closer to his work with Dark Space than what we've learned to expect from Passage Daver. But I feel like this is really well put together. Atmospheric black metal, doesn't matter what name it's under. At number 16, I have Ebony Pendant with The Garden of Strangling Roots. And um, yeah, I kind of wonder if people sort of forgot that this came out because after a month or so, I didn't really see many folks still talking about it. But I feel like this is really well done US black metal, well composed with great riffs. At number 15, we're going with Saidan with Jigoku, Spiraling Chasms of the Blackest Hell. Um, I think a lot of people, including myself, were really looking forward to this full length after the demo that Sidan dropped. This is melodic black metal with a raw edge, and it's just fantastic. Um, at number 14, I'm not sure how to pronounce any of this, but um, you know what? I'm not even going to fucking try, dude. I'm not even going to try. Here's the name here. There you go. Um, and this is really interesting, twisted, chaotic black metal. No idea who's behind the project or where they're from, but it's such a weird and unique project in a world of super derivative raw black metal but there's a lot of something special in this project and i'm really really enjoying it uh, at number 13 i'm going with blood magic with medieval dark arts this band came out of nowhere and blew me away it's raw black metal with awesome riffs um this should actually be higher on this list but i really didn't feel like messing with the list when i was done with it so it is what it is. Um, number 12, 
the sun's journey through the night with demo two uh sun's journey through the night's album was pretty high on my list last year and this demo picks up perfectly where crawling nebula left off it's great atmospheric black metal that's full of heart and full of emotion great stuff number 11 i'm going with revenant marquise with below the lansker line um the king of what the fuck is going on here black metal returns with another excellent piece of his discography this is some of the ugliest shit going right now super gross super muddy sounds like it was recorded in a actually you know what it sounds like it was recorded in a dungeon and it definitely makes you feel like you were locked in a dungeon while you're listening to it but it's fantastic number 10 going with gg king with remain intact uh gg king is a local punk band from atlanta that's been around for a while but i feel like this is the album that they've been building up to this whole time it's just awesome it's still kind of dirty but it has some incredible pop sensibilities added in especially in the hooks but uh it's super infectious great great punk rock number nine cannibal corpse with violence unimagined i haven't cared about a cannibal corpse album in a while but this one fucking rules brutal death metal with riffs for days in my opinion this is some of the best material they've written in many many years uh at number eight old nick with a new generation of vampiric conspiracies uh super bizarre raw black metal with a punky attitude uh not so much punky in sound but definitely in aesthetic uh nothing really sounds like this for better or worse but i absolutely love what's happening here uh and number seven i'm going with halloween's album halloween Holy fuck, man. Surprise album of the decade, right? These guys got together and made a power metal masterpiece. This album is really untouchable. It's great from start to finish. Riffs, vocals, production. It's just such a fun listen. Uh, number six, I'm going with Slant with the album, I believe, is translated as One. And uh, I've never heard of this Korean hardcore band until this album dropped, and I've listened to it so many times. It's fast, it's snotty, it's pissed the fuck off, and it's just awesome. At number five, I'm going with Kekterat with uh, Pale Swordsman. And I'm still not sure how to pronounce the name of this group. Uh, one of these days, I'll stop being a lazy asshole and I'll actually Google it. But um, this is black metal from the Ukraine. Uh, this carries on the sound that he created with Night and Love. And it's just as good, in my opinion. You know, it, it, it sounds evil at times, but it also has this frail and beautiful feel to it. At number four, we have Leonaka with Tides of Triumph. And uh, this is U.S. Native American themed black metal that is just so well put together. Like the musicianship on here is just perfect. Like I can listen to this over and over and over again and not get tired of it man the metal parts are stunning the folk elements are magical you guys if you like black metal you definitely need to check this out at number three i have panopticon with and again into the light what can be said about panopticon at this point man austin is absolutely unstoppable um i think i enjoyed this one more than his last album the scars of man upon a once Nameless Wilderness, um, there's just so much emotion dumped into this album. Like, you can hear it. You can feel it. You know, Austin's, his brand of atmospheric black metal is really like no other band. At number two, I have Nick Cave and Warren Ellis with Carnage. Um, this is another album that I don't feel like I heard a lot of folks gushing about after it was released. But this is a gorgeous, beautiful album. Uh, even though Warren Ellis has been part of the Bad Seeds for a minute, I feel like this doesn't sound like Nick Cave and the Bad Seeds albums, man. There's there's something very different here. Uh, some true, heartbreaking, soulful music on this thing here, man. And I, I definitely think you guys should check it out if you have not already. And that lands us at the number one spot, man. Number fucking one. Yeah, so my favorite project of 2021 so far is... The Uvia Akato split summoning the eclipse. Uh, I feel like anyone that knows me and knows Uvia would absolutely not be surprised by this pick. But uh, I feel like Uvia 
is a name that everyone knows when it comes to atmospheric black metal. You know, their past albums have always been perfect examples of what the genre can and should offer. And this latest split is no deviation from that. You know, Yuvia returned with a sort of secret or at least kind of under promoted release that displays some of their best work. Incredible musical proficiency and an ability to really make you drift off into this world that they're creating. Ikadal is a band that I wasn't familiar with prior to this split, but they're fantastic too. Raw, nasty, atmospheric, black metal. Um, I almost feel bad for them being on this release because if they were on their own, I'm sure I'd talk about it a lot more and I'd listen to it a lot more. But when it comes to this split, I just automatically lean towards the UV side because I am fanatical about that band. But this split is absolutely incredible. So this is something I don't normally do, but I'm gonna throw a couple of honorable mentions out here real quick. Um, AFI's Bodies. I'm really enjoying this project. I don't know if it's gonna end up being on my end of the year list, but I just recently started listening to it and I'm really enjoying it. Um, the first demo from Silent Thunder, which is the guy from uh, Lamp of Murmur, and it's raw and great black metal. Uh, the Pharaoh Saunders album with Floating Points and the London Symphony Orchestra, it's called Promises. Um, it it should have been on this list, but to be honest, I kind of forgot about it until the list was finalized and it was giving me anxiety trying to figure out how to reorganize everything. So I just said, fuck it. Um, but I've listened to this a lot. It's fantastic. It's ambient. It's God, it's soulful. It's fucking awesome. And um, Charlie Crockett with uh, 10 for Slim. Charlie Crockett sings James Hand. Um, this is great country music. Uh, as the title suggests, this is Charlie Crockett singing the songs of one of his I guess you can call them mentors or his musical heroes, but this is just great, soulful, smooth country music, and I love it. But um, that's it. That's gonna do it for this video. As I've said, please drop your list down there in the comment section so we can all take a look, and maybe we'll all walk away with some things that we weren't aware of before. But um, yeah, as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you, and I'll see you guys next time. All right, peace out.